Hello everyone, Sir Gantelot here again. Today I'll be talking about an area within Microsoft Project which can be challenging for many people, especially those just getting started, and that is baselining project schedules. And what I'd like to do is to show you an easy alternative to baselining. This session is part of a number that you can find on YouTube where I give you some tips, tools, techniques and tricks for slaying those project management monsters that plague us on a daily basis. MONSTER is my acronym for Management, Organization, Network, Scheduling and Tracking Error. So let's get started by opening up a Microsoft Project schedule here. A fairly typical one this and what will normally happen with a schedule like this in most organizations is that the project manager maybe once a week once a month will gather together the project team and look at those activities which are upcoming the tasks activities deadlines milestones that the team needs to be focusing on in the upcoming period at the end of the meeting everyone will go away get back to work come back again for the next meeting and then look at the schedule all over again. Now it may be of course that in the interim the project manager has changed one or more tasks. Maybe this task has slipped further. Unless everybody has a pretty good memory they may not spot the fact that something has changed. Imagine that situation scaled up to a project management office looking at a number of different schedules with the project managers for each schedule in attendance maybe each project has a thousand or so tasks it can be even more difficult to spot what the differences are now the traditional and typical way to track those changes is to baseline the project schedule and to measure changes which is exactly the right way to do it however certainly to start off with it can be complicated let's look at this schedule right here and I think you'll agree but there's a lot of spaghetti over here that can be hard to interpret without a trained and experienced eye. Here we've got a baseline set, we can see the current plan, we can see progress in terms of percentage complete, we can also see progress lines. Rather complicated to get a big picture. So I did mention that there is an easy alternative, so let's take a look at that right now. Let's look at our original schedule, this one right here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to set an interim plan. Now that say, sounds a little bit like baselining and indeed we're going to look at the same uh, command area within project to set that interim plan. But it is an easier thing to do. Let's take a look here. Let's go to tools, tracking and set baseline. However, once we click there, we're not going to set the baseline. Instead, we're going to set an interim plan. And take a look at what happens when I do that. When I click here, for every task in the project, we've copied the start and finish dates into two additional fields, the start one field and the finish one field. So when I now click OK, of course we don't really see any immediate difference but what I'd like to do is to show how that act can make it easier to track progress. The first thing we're going to do is insert a custom field. Now we do that by right clicking on any of the columns and click insert column. And the one that I'm going to choose is one that I customized here called finish date changed. Let's insert that first and I'll show you in a moment how we customize a field. Now as we see here, no change because since I set that interim plan we haven't made any changes. But Let's imagine we're now going to go ahead and make some changes. Let's look at task 12 here, this one, and let's change the finish date from 6.12 to 6.19. Notice that over on the right the task does move out, but more interestingly I've got an indicator here that shows that that task has indeed slipped to the right and by seven days if you hover over it it says exactly how much it slipped and look further down you'll see that all the dependent tasks have also slipped all the tasks that are uh, dependent on that one have slipped out as well let's instead of and of course not always is the news bad in one of these meetings let's say that in the intervening period instead of slipping out we would brought the task forward to the sixth for example and note that on this occasion the indicators go off to the left instead of to the right so a quick way here to 
determine what has changed since the last interim plan was set. So what I would suggest is after each weekly team meeting and the changes have been agreed, a new interim plan is set and then for the next meeting we can see what the changes are. Let's quickly look at that customize field. In order to customize a field in the first place you would go to tools, customize and fields here and then you go to the field that you want to customize. Now I've already customized this field so what we'll do is just close this down and look at the customizations I made. The way that you can do that is just right click on the top of the field here go to customize fields and it will now default to the field that we were uh, hovering over. And notice that what I did is I customized the number one field. All the other number fields are still here in their original condition. But I customized number one by hitting rename, changing the name. Then what I did is I created a fairly simple formula here. Let's look at that formula. And you'll remember that the setting the interim plan copied the finish date into finish one. So here I've made a formula which compares those two finish dates. And to uh, create formulas, if you can't remember syntax, you can use these uh, operator functions down here. You can select fields, you can select functions, and you can click on the arithmetic functions here. So pretty easy to create these formulas. Then the final step was I also set graphical indicators, determined that I would display graphical indicators rather than the result of the formula. And I have three conditions here. If the result is greater than zero, in other words the date has slipped off to the right, then I've put in this right arrow. Notice that in Microsoft Project a whole bunch of different uh, indicators that you can choose from. For the condition that there's no change, just a blank, and for the condition that the finish date has gotten earlier, then I've got an indicator that indicates that that date has moved off to the left. So, fairly straightforward to customize this field. Now, of course, you can become more uh, complex if you wish to. You can set other indicators that show trends over a period of interim plans. But I think you'll agree that this view here is rather more straightforward to use than the other one we looked at here. And uh, please do go ahead and experiment with these uh, techniques. Uh, this, um, before I close out today, I'd just like to go back to our presentation here. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd also like you to visit my sponsor if you have time. The sponsor is Westall Murray International, a consulting and services company in the area of project management and certainly does have some special skills in Microsoft Project. You can look at the website here, www.westallmurray.com. One of the things you'll find there is exactly how I came to be Sir Gantelot in the first place. So take a look. Please do visit YouTube on a regular basis. Many more videos of this type will be uploaded. I hope you found them helpful. And thank you very much indeed for watching today.